James Clem. There you are. Austin, Texas. Todd Earl. Yeah. North hey, El Paso. Yeah, you had a good, <laughs> yeah, that was a great bite picture you posted on Facebook right next to the Capitol. Yeah, I I love Texas. I, now, I I have a deep heart for Texas. So. Were you riding during that time, or did you stop and take it? Oh, there's a side street right next to the Capitol where yeah. you can kind of look into it really well. And so I've taken a number of pictures there with the motorcycles and stuff. I just happen to be riding um, all day Saturday morning. And, you know, Texas is open. I'm telling you what, I, I, mm. I rode all downtown Austin and... Uh, Restaurants were full. Um, the, the, there's a little town lake that goes right through the middle of Austin. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. there were thousands of kayakers on there. So I think, I think people are ready to live their lives again. How's it going up in Northern California? <laughs> the traffic's back to normal. So oh, that, really? That means people are getting out. And I see more on walks now. Uh, I don't wear a mask on a walk because I, I don't want to I want good oxygen and you just stay away from people. But <laughs> are you uh, are you wearing your mask while you're driving around? Uh, only for show. Well, that's the only one I have my cowboy <laughs> hat on. No, I just tease you know. <laughs> oh, it's so silly. Some people, they don't they don't understand how uh, PPE actually well, works. But there's, a, you know, there's been a lot of confusion out there. So I I just give everybody a benefit of the doubt. But it's it's. Uh, it's it's good to be back. There's a sense of being back. I think I had that after being in the office for a week and listening to you and some of our other colleagues that have been up and open. They're they're up and moving. And, uh, you know, I saw on the CDC on this, I think, Friday night that they're saying that it may not be as contagious off of surfaces, which is a good thing. That's going to have a big impact on us. Yeah, absolutely. It's changing yeah. every day. Did, and uh, Yeah. Did you see that? Did you see yeah, that notice? I sure yeah. did. Yeah, it sure did. And, you know, they're, that they're changing a lot. lot. Yeah. And they're changing, like, you know, I hate to even talk about this on our show because we want to stay positive. But one good thing always. is they're that, always that was positive. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're changing, like, the, the death counts, too. You know, they were, yeah. you know, they're, they're getting to more realistic numbers. So I just hope that when this is all done, um, our country, our planet is going to have a good lesson from this. So we're, we're more aware of, you know, viruses in general and, and morbidity of them, but also how to manage them on as a population. And so yeah. hopefully that'll well, be what comes you out. You know, it's a serious thing. And if you've lost a loved one or, or if you've been ill yourself, then you know, and yeah. uh, fortunately disease happens and it's always there, but it, yeah, we're up a... on, and we're up and going. And I know, um, I feel I feel normal today. This is the first weekend <laughs> that I have felt like it's normal life again since the shutdown. I don't know about you. It, it was like even inside of me, I feel different. Yeah, you, you look what? normal, man. You just sound normal. Do I do I feel more normal? <laughs> <laughs> no, it, no. It's like like what we did last Sunday. Our new normal. Yeah, is, de yeah. is definitely a new way of looking at life, and I, I, it, getting to know you again and and better, James. I've just like this has been a a great opportunity for me to take all this this garbage that's happened and reevaluate things and and ch make yeah. some decisions in my life of what I'm going to be focused on. And so, I think you know that's what our dental show live is all about, right? And I'm going to be talking about that tonight. But you have something real important. You showed me something yeah. in the green room that, that had a lot of meaning to me. Yeah. Well, uh, me so for this weekend, for this weekend and what it yeah. means on Monday. Yeah. So uh, if you're watching this episode recorded where this is Memorial Day weekend. And so this yeah. is Sunday night of that. And so, you know, that's it's one of the great holidays of the of the United States, our, our heritage and and really honoring the military and the, especially those that, you know, fought and died for our freedoms. And that actually helps the rest of the world and at least in our opinion and and so uh james and i have had great opportunities we didn't do this together we did it separately but we both have trained a lot of the military uh navy dentists and uh, uh we both have trained at pearl harbor yeah and so uh, i got uh one of their coins uh this was 10 years ago exactly 10 years ago 2010 uh, and they were doing their uh, rim pack 
exercises where the whole Western Hemisphere Navy is working with the uh, our allies and they're doing all sorts of exercises. And I just happened to be there right at that same time. And so it was a really big honor to uh, work at the Pearl Harbor and Kanoe, which is the the Marine base on the other side of the big island. So anyway, it's fun. You know, I, I got two of those. And when they when the gentleman gave it to me, yeah, it, it, there was like meaning in their eyes. Like this is something special for me transferring to you. Yeah. And uh, I, I meant to have mine tonight and I have them at the office. And uh, I was sharing them with my team just a few weeks ago. <laughs> They're big. Special you got it. You got Yeah, it's a big yeah. honor, especially as civilians to be able Huge. to get them. Yeah, yeah. Really big. and you know, one thing I was very impressed with with the military they're very advanced in their dental applications and their technology yeah. and very impressed with their quality of work. Uh, that was a great experience because, you know, I grew up in Hawaii. Yeah. And I remember seeing the different bases and it was good to be involved with it once you leave. Yeah. Yeah. One, uh, one interesting uh, CAD CAM fact in all this is that uh, the, all the Navy ships that have any dental clinics have to have CEREC on it. Uh, mm -hmm. because they have to get their sailors, uh, I think what they call it, uh, uh, battle ready or something like that, where they, yeah. they even a broken tooth doesn't allow a helicopter pilot to fly the, That's fly right. the helicopter. And so a broken tooth is an emergency situation. And so he, he gets put on the boat, they have to fix him. And so they use Sarek to do that, which is actually pretty cool, I thought. Got to turn but, it around. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, I got to make one last shout out and then we'll bring our guest on unless you've got something else. But uh my wife's first cousin uh, mm. gave me this about in 2013 and 14. He was he was running what's called the Blue Spaders. He's in the in the in the army, and he is a, currently a colonel and runs. Oh, the, he he runs the NATO base in Belgium, yeah. and uh, oh, this guy wow. Jake, man, I, he is all places. God bless Jake. That guy has yes. been uh, in the army from day one. He rose the ranks and now he's a really high level colonel. And so anyway, Jake, glad to be your your friend and uh, bless you for everything you do for my yep. country. So I appreciate our freedoms and those that have laid their lives down for us. Absolutely. In, in, in the generations prior to us, because we have an incredible country. We have incredible freedoms and, and we can't lose side of that even in right. the tough times you know you got any uh, deep thoughts for us i do uh jim Rohn is a favorite author of mine and he wrote a book the seasons of life and he talks about you know winter fall autumn and summer and we're coming out of a winter in a sense of where winter is when you want to have everything stored up because when you're in a winter season from a business standpoint or a life standpoint that's using a crisis or your compromise maybe through your business and he always talks about storing up for the winter and that takes me back to our conversation with t-bone dr agarwal because he learned that in 2008 where that was a major winter in our life and he changed his whole thinking about his business plan and how he was going to develop his business so he could enter another winter season. And I think that's what I've learned from this is that uh, always be prepared for a winter season because that's a normal process of life. And all civilizations prior to ours where they didn't have the conveniences that we have now really prepared for the winter. And uh, my wife and I were talking about that. And one of our goals is we want to develop gardening skills and more being more self-sustaining and also minimalize we want to get rid of all our extra stuff make life a little more simple just the other day todd and i we uh i, I should say todd my wife and i were out um just doing lawn work and i was mowing the lawn and we were trimming the hedges and all that and just doing that together brought so much joy and we hadn't done that together in probably almost 20 years nice. and when we came back in you know i was a little tired but I think the point that I'm making is that those simple things and doing things together, it was a real blessing to me. And, and I think that's my challenge to everybody is find out what life is all about, usually through being a minimalist 
and more self-reliant. And uh, that way, when the next winter comes, and it will come, we're going to be okay. But we're coming out of the winter. Yes, we are. And that's the good news. That's where we are now. Well, uh, let's uh, let's bring in the man himself. Yes, Eddie, you're on Eddie the screen Acrellis. and you're here. Yes. And Eddie, I have to thank Eddie. Yeah, he's Mr. Smile Man. I heard you speak at the Dent Supply Sarah World, and I was right there on the front row. In fact, if you would have sat down, you would, would have been in my lap. But I really love your passion, and I love your emphasis on the emotional side of the smile which i've been in tune to for years because i've been doing smile makeovers and when you win emotionally everybody's happy and i just thought your presentation was excellent and the way that you share that and build that up with doctors that you work with is tremendous how's it been for you in the last several months because your 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 flow probably has been a little different like ours has hasn't it yeah, yeah. Well, first, uh, thank you for uh, having me in the show, uh, James and Todd. Um, yeah, it's been scary, but not as scary as having you in the crowd when I did that presentation. I gotta <laughs> that. When you walked in into the room, and remember, it was, it was a full house, and you sat right in the front, in front of the podium, and a few people came up to me and said, hey, James Clemens in the, in the audience. <laughs> I'm like, oh, man, you were my friend already, but still. It was a little crazy to have you in the front there. So, uh, but thank you for being there. It was I really love doing that presentation. It was great. It was ex it was very well done, Eddie. And and I think the way you uh, work through the emotional side of it is the missing link within smile design. It, yeah. It, it, it was tremendous. Yeah. Yeah, I think that uh, people are understanding now this because of social media. Um, people know now what they're getting, and they're, they're asking the right questions. And um, we got past this whole thing, how much it costs, or they still like how much it costs, I just don't see the value on mm -hmm. teeth and smile. So getting that emotional effect of them seeing um, what's going on, or what's going to happen uh, is pretty cool, you know, and I've been doing it, you know it very well, both of you, uh, I'm a member of DSD, Digital Smile Design, mm -hmm. and that we learned this, you know, and I put it to practice actually before I took all these courses with uh, Christian Coachman. And I was already doing it. I just didn't know that I was doing it. I was calling myself a smile designer when I first opened this laboratory back mm -hmm. in uh, uh, 2000, maybe to 1999, because mm -hmm. I opened this lab in 1998. And I already was putting myself in magazines around downtown San Diego, calling myself a smile designer. I just made that up. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I was just designing <laughs> smiles, and I was using um, a lot of Photoshop uh, to do my work, which I still do Photoshop. Yeah, it's crazy because then I saw Christian Coachman doing this in um, in Vegas, and I was watching this guy for three days, and I was make I was doing the math of uh, you know how much we paid to go see him in three days that we learned a lot. It was totally worth it. But I was like, man, this guy is talking about the same stuff that I've been doing for a long time. I just never did anything with it. I was just presenting my smiles. This DSD gave me organization mm -hmm. uh, app or using Keynote, PowerPoint, Photoshop, but it gave me a way to get not only to the patient's heart or mind, but also the doctor and the staff. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it, it is it is a, a lot of money that they have to invest, but they need to see how uh, where is this money going to. So when you get that emotion, emotional thing uh, factor in there, it's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. It is. It is. You know, I always tell people every time I do a smile and I've been doing them for years, I get that e emotion butterfly inside, almost like I'm getting up to give a speech or maybe I remember a blind date or something like that. Didn't have too many, but you know, where you're looking forward to it, but yet you have a little bit of nerves and, uh, it, it, but it's a, it's an incredible service we do for our clients of yeah. where that's some of the most significant life-changing events I've ever been in touch with. And knowing that we have this, the toolkits to do that is just amazing. Yeah, yeah, and you probably heard this. I always say this in my presentation. I probably did it in Vegas. Um, you know, for me, the smile is uh, probably the most important thing in a, pa in a person's appearance. It's the first thing that we see when someone comes mm -hmm. out of an elevator or in a, in a Starbucks, or it's very welcoming, you know, to the point that we, the, the, the people that are into dentistry, when we have somebody come up to us and they're serious and they don't show any dentition, they look upset or they look not happy. 
yeah. right? So I would say yeah. that is the most important feature. Now, maybe somebody that's lipo thinks that, you know, thighs are the most important thing in a body, you know? I don't know. But for me, it's the smile. And I always tell the same story because I really just a hello with a healthy smile is a very cool welcoming thing that maybe you change somebody's life, you know? Yeah. Um, well, you know, you asked about um, well, this disease is going on, going around it. Yeah, I'm glad they're almost out little by little. Um, we needed uh, smiles more often, you know? Uh, we needed a lot of positivity uh, happening. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I happened to be, when they closed the United States, pretty much, uh, that was about maybe the 5th of March. I had just come back from doing my last uh, cat's mouse in Florida. Mm. Going to Florida, that was on the 1st of March. There was nobody in the airport. It was scary. Yeah. It was, uh, it, it was, it, you would think that the, the zombies were going to come at one point because <laughs> it was just empty. And then on the way back, uh, that's when I started hearing, you know, um, the consequences of this people getting sick and, and, and dying. Uh, and on the way back here to San Diego, everything shut down 24 hours later. And um, it was, uh, it was just shocking that we were living through an era where, you know, the, the world is shutting down. Uh, and, and from day one, I thought, you know, how are you going to shut down this amazing country? You know, we, I mean, the, you guys travel around the world and, you know, I, I, I've done my, my, my bit of traveling and they see us as workaholics here in, in, in the United States. We work. That's Obviously, true. Um, you know, I have a story to tell you later about why I became who I became. But, you know, this is a, it's a lot of opportunities here in the United States. And that's why a lot of people come here to work. Mm -hmm. um, it was crazy to see how it was shut down. And I thought, how are we going to how are we going to survive this? Right. How I mean, I was OK. You know, I had you know, I was giving myself a month until April 1st. thinking, OK, we we'll just ride it for a month. I was OK. All the rants and everything going on. Cool. Cool deal. But then I started thinking. How about the people that are not as fortunate to have a savings account or 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 money somewhere to survive this? What's what's you know the single parents they have three kids you know and a single job and they live you know week to week check to check you yeah, know yeah yeah uh, I, I even started thinking how long are we gonna wait before looting starts happening? I was thinking about before the military starts getting into you know gladly we didn't yeah. get to that you know uh, right. it's been two months. Um, you know, and it's been, like you said, James, in the introduction, uh, in the beginning, I thought, oh, crap, you know, here we go. This is not good. But then, you know, I've always been a positive person. Mm -hmm. I thought, this is a pretty, I have to do something cool about this, you know. Um, so I, my family, you know, my kids, you know, we, I cooked more at home. Uh, uh, we did things in the backyard more. Um, we just more together. We got connected more. Mm -hmm. And. Um, I feel it positive in that, uh, not only with my family, but in other people that I was just talking on the phone or Zoom, you know, with my kids doing homework. Um, a lot of people started seeing it that way. And, you know, through Facebook, you start seeing people seeing it the same way. You know, the positive side mm -hmm. of, OK, you know, we're confined in our house. Uh, you know, we got to make the best out of it. Mm -hmm. And me. I got to tell you, I started gaining a lot of weight. It wasn't because of my amazing cooking. <laughs> it was, I think a little bit was because of my good taste in red wine. <laughs> you're at home, you know, you say you open one bottle, you have one glass, and then before you know it, you have the second, and, you know, you eat, you don't exercise that much. So then you start eating less and drinking less when you see yourself in the mirror after like three weeks. <laughs> hey, Eddie, it's been like that for me for over 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> so eddie uh why don't we do this i would love for everybody and for those that don't know you well i'm going to play a quick little video that kind of highlights your um uh, your cad cam uh, okay. abilities and your um cad smiles okay right on. you want to you want to set it up at all uh yeah uh just uh you know i've always again going back to the dsd i always try to make some kind of video that I can put on social media, not only for mm -hmm. potential clients, but I really want people to see the advantage of cat cam. And it, it doesn't have to be same day smiles, which is what I do a lot, but you know, we do smiles anyways. I just like to do smiles. Same day, not same day, design it and send it back, whatever it is. 
this video really tells the whole story on, on what it is. And it's, it's pretty cool because now the tools we have, people know what they're getting into before yeah. they do anything. And this is video, is, is, it explains it. That's great, it. great. My name is Eddie Corrales. I am a ceramist. I'm also a smile designer and a CAD CAM designer. I've done about 1,100 cases around the world and has given me a lot of experience on how to talk to patients, also how to communicate with the doctor and also their staff, giving them security when I do my cases. Same Day Smiles is a unique service um, that's become available over the last probably 10 years or so. Patients can come in, have a wand, just a magic scan of their mouth, some basic photography taken, and we can digitally plan out their whole case. Sometimes these cases would take three, four, or five appointments. Most patients don't even want to come to one appointment, much less two or three or more. DSD stands for Digital Smile Design. It's been around for about 10 years. It was created by Dr. Christian Coachman. It's something that we use a lot now in dentistry, and it's a big advantage when it comes to explaining to the patient what is going to happen. This DSD concept gives us a way to create an emotional connection between the patient and the treatment plan. It helps us tell the patient what is going to happen, how it's going to look, and have the patient fall in love what is going to happen so they can enjoy the journey from day one until we finish the entire process. The thing that Eddie brings is the energy and the expertise, right? Making sure everything works smoothly and all the extra things. Uh, he brings, in a sense, his own lab with him. If you don't have even some technology, he'll bring a whole piece of equipment so that we can do these cases on the patients. Working with Eddie has been phenomenal because he's really been a, a leader in this industry. He comes to you and he uses your office, your facility, your patients get the service that same day. He's the best. Eddie, you are the best, <laughs> that, man. That right, video Eddie. is awesome. I was I was thumping my head listening to that video. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Man. It was cool. I really I really enjoyed it. And I got to really thank uh, Scott Strummer. Uh, yeah. For doing the case with me, he's an amazing mentor to me, and yeah. uh, you know I, I did some, I've done some of the COIS uh, education, but he's gone through the whole curriculum, so I, I'm always learning from him as well. And it's always a pleasure working with him and 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 other doctors that have taken uh, dentistry to another level. Um, it, it's it's not that I'm walking in and just commanding the whole thing. It's you got to really be ready to work with Scott Strummer because he knows his stuff. And the yeah. staff was great. Uh, we had our video guy there all day. Uh, it was a, it was a pretty cool day. It's a very cool, very cool video. I'm glad it turned out that way. No, so, Eddie. Oh, go ahead, James. Sorry. Go ahead. No, go go. That was a good question, Todd. I I, I think. Oh no, I was just. Well, we were uh, we were talking before uh, we started with Eddie, kind of his story and how he got into where he's yeah. at right now, and it's it's great. So why don't, why don't you lay it out on us? You know, um, I love telling this story. I haven't. I haven't told this story because I, I used to tell it a lot uh, when I first started speaking for Vita and a long time ago, Vita, and when I first got my in-lab system, a long time ago, I'm talking red cam, red ENEOS, everything I read. And I started lecturing and I, I bought this book at, at one of the airports that was called, I believe, The Excellent Presenter or The Exceptional Presenter. It's a short book that somebody recommended to me. And in that book was telling me to get stories from my life and to do the up and down on the stories, to connect my story to the point that I wanted to make in my conversation or in my presentations. So we know we all do that, boom, 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 to get people's attentions within 15 seconds. Well, my story that I used to tell um, was this one that I'm telling you now, but maybe a little longer version, is that you know I was supposed to be a professional soccer player uh, in Argentina. Um, I, I'm, I still play to this day with a bad knee. I still play with my friends, my boy. But uh, I didn't make it as a soccer player, not because I wasn't good enough. I just was not applied enough. I wasn't, mm -hmm. I wasn't permitted enough. I was too young. I was uh, 18 years old. And it, it really, you know, to be a, uh, an athlete, it takes courage. It takes, you know, that that's what you're going to do for the rest of your life. Yeah. Uh, no party, no nothing. This is your body. That's your tool. Um, you know, and I was a little crazy in those days, still a little crazy, but... No, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't for me. So I came back from Argentina 
um, here to the United States, and um, I didn't have anything. Um, I just had my, my, I just graduated from, from high school and I had nothing. Uh, I just had a car. I had a, uh, a 1982 Datsun 210 um, mm-hmm. with nice painted rims that I painted by hand. I had a Craco station, uh, radio. Uh, uh, I had the back so my friends could reach out and grab the beers. It was young days, or the old days, you know, <laughs> when it was it was not. Now you don't do that anymore. But anyways, I had nothing, and I felt like a failure. You know, I felt really bad. I was really down in my life. It was very young, but I I didn't know what to do. So my cousin, who passed away about three years ago, mm-hmm. um, he offered me my first job, uh, delivering uh, the cases from his laboratory in Santa Ana, California, and he hired me just to do deliveries. And, and pour up the impressions, pick up and just pour up the impressions. And he told me, if, I'm going to pay you base, basic, just minimum wage. If you want to learn anything else, it's up to you to stay at night when all the guys are working. If you finish your work properly, you can watch them work. But I'm, you're not getting anything else from us. I said, okay, you know, that's, that's good enough uh, to work. But I don't, you know, I didn't have any work to live. Um, uh, we had another issue where my sister had to leave to Argentina because of a visa with her husband. And so I was out in the street. And I asked him if I could stay in the attic on top of the laboratory. There was a, a, the main office and the lab was in the back. I had these little tiles that you see above me. But on the office, it was wood. It was a ceiling. It was a roof. And it was all the old equipment in there. There was no light. There was nothing. So I asked him if I could live there uh, because I wanted to do something for myself. I don't know what got into me. I just didn't want to. I didn't want people to see me. As a failure, I just want to be alone. And he said, well, you can live with us. I said, no, I don't want to live with you. I just want to live up there. Please let me live up there. i tell you this. There was cockroaches in this place. <laughs> there was, it, it was an industrial center in Santa Ana, dark as hell. And I would have a ladder that I would have to open and get one of the tiles out so I can jump. And there <laughs> I put a little <laughs> And there was a gas pipe that ran through by the wall, and that was my hanger. So I had my little like shirts and stuff like that. And I went to uh, before Target. We had Jemco. I don't know if you remember Jemco. Um, we um, I bought a cardboard uh, drawer system. You know, cardboard you put it all together yourself. And there I had you know my underwear and stuff like that. And a little my light was a typical light that is just a uh, uh, a little metal ring like that. You just turn it on. That was just my light. Um, so I lived there for three months, um, and at the same time, as soon as I started doing that, I joined a dental laboratory school nearby. So I was working from uh, 7 in the morning. I would jump down, and I had to actually jump to the top of the ladder. So if you just jump, if you miss, you're down. So you have to be really coordinated to jump and then just go down, and I would wash myself off. I would take showers at friends' houses like every three days, okay? I was young. I was probably 20 by now. And um, uh, I remember going to school at 4 o'clock. So I would go from 7 to 4. I worked in the laboratory. At 4 o'clock, I would go to school from 5 to 10. And at 10, I would go back to my house, my laboratory, finish whatever I wouldn't finish, and just brush my teeth and go up to the cockroaches and just sleep there. And... Um, I was there for three months until my brother uh, got an apartment and stuff and asked me if I wanted to live with him. Of course, I said, yes, let's do it. But every time I told this story, I never felt sorry for myself. I don't think it's a bad story. I don't think it's a sad story. I've always been proud of that, you know, because, you know, like I said before uh, we started, this country is full of opportunity. That's why a lot of people are here. I always said that people that come here and don't get jobs is because they don't want to work. Uh, I could be wrong, but I, if you want to work, this opportunity in the United States. And that's my example of how, you know, yeah, okay, I lived in the dark three months, but it made me feel good. Because when I tell that story to younger people that think that they already, they, they, they're entitled to something, you're not entitled to anything. You got to work for it. You know, you got to yeah. do something. So um, I moved here to San Diego uh, right after I graduated. So I worked there for three months. Then I, I lived with my brother. For another four months, I finished my course, and right before I finished my course, I got a job offer here in San Diego as a ceramist. And here I am uh, today, you know, just um, I was 21 when I first moved here, 
and um, it's been a great ride. You know, it's been a great ride. Um, one of, you know, I always learn from people. You know, when I was younger, my same cousin that hired me, um, I would ask him, you know, because I was always afraid of dying in those days. You know, AIDS was a big thing in those days. Um, and, and he told me, you know, you can't worry about dying. You got to worry about living. You know, live your day every day like if it was your last day. That was yeah. one of the things he told me. You know, and I do that every day. There hasn't been one time that I remember that I wake up in the morning in a bad mood, believe it or not. I'm always happy that I'm breathing in the morning. I'm just really yeah, happy to, to go another day, to go another day and do it again. Whatever brings me, I just want to be happy about it. That's why, I don't know, that's, um, that's something that makes me happy. It gets people around me get really happy when they're around me, you know? Well, Eddie, you're... Yeah, you're a big leader in the dental world, um, in the dental lab technician world. What uh, people aren't as happy as you are. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> you know, they're we're all struggling, and I I think dental lab technicians are probably taking it on the chin even more so than what we are. And uh, what what do you think you can tell them that will help them get through all this? Well, you know, I believe a lot in in that energy. This is something that I um, I started understanding. Uh, maybe about uh, 10 years ago, uh, the energy that surrounds us. Uh, you call it, uh, you go the via religion with a God, or you, you call it with the universe, or you call it with an en energy. Um, you know, and when this happened, I stayed positive. Like I said before, I stayed positive. I saw the positive side of it. I could have totally gone in the dark and said, oh, crap, you know, my, my doctors are not going to send me work. What am I going to do? How am I going to pay my bills? I, I started breathing, and I was like, you know what? Things happen for a reason. And this time, I'm not on my own. We're all in the same boat. So it's not that I'm broke. You're broke. You're broke. So we all have to be a team and get out of this together. So just like when we started with changing the way that we see the pollution in this world, that, you know, go ahead and throw your plastic in the blue bin, many people said, ah, crap it. Ah, nah. Why? Eps. And throw it right there where that starts with you, that starts with me. Because if I say I'm not gonna do it, then nobody's gonna do it. But if I say I'm gonna do that, I'm accountable for my part of the deal. Mm -hmm. Positivity mm -hmm. is the same thing. I bring positive things and positive things happen. You know, my kids are happy, everybody around me is happy. I'm, you know, I, this is the only bad part of this whole thing. Remo, who everybody knows, lives about three houses down from me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I do have to run into him a lot. Uh, but you know, he's, he's like a brother to me, but you know, he's a positive guy too. So, mm -hmm. um, my message here is, um, just, just stay positive and think, think of positive ways to get out of this. Use this mm -hmm. as a, I guess a trampoline to just take mm -hmm. off because we're all in the same boat. Now yeah. in the last week and the last week, uh, maybe the last 10 days, my week next week got completely booked mm -hmm. and. And I got three full mouth cases coming up. I got a nice. lot of certain cases coming up. And it was just, I believe, like my entire life, it's the positivity. It's just think the positive thing, you know. Uh, there's a lot of messages that I can tell you, you know, that you probably know it. If you have nothing good to say, don't say anything kind of thing. I'm yeah. always yeah. always yeah. positive. And I don't look, I try not to look at the bad part. It's really easy to fall into that. It's really hey, easy to Hey, Eddie, I have a question for you. With with your work that you do right now, how much of it is actually live in dental offices versus what you do just from a distance with a distant uh, – I mean, because you do cases from your lab as well. And then you're – I mean, I, in, the, in the years, the last 10 years, I've seen you all over the world. <laughs> yeah. Well, you guys know this. Uh, I mean, I told – you know, and, and, and Todd, you said it before – you know, I, I, I feel sorry. You know, I feel bad for people that have lost loved ones uh, through this whole ride over here. And, and they, we're going to lose some more people. Um, but in the dental world, we have dealt or we've been dealing with AIDS, with uh, with hepatitis. We have all that stuff still living there. So dental office is always prepared to be disinfected, to, to take care of what's going on, the surroundings, so we don't touch anybody any more than we need to. Um, so I think your question is how am I dealing with doing the work in office and how do we deal mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. the workflow? The distance, you know, it's just a distance to mask, um, uh, the fever taking, um, 
it's just everybody's the same boat. You know, they all want to yeah. open. They to say, they, we want to open. Boom, we're ready to open. Everybody was just ready to work. Everybody. Yeah. I had one day, this really young friend of mine, Dr. Um, Pierce here. He's probably in his early 30s. Super smart guy. I called him the second week that this happened. This was happening where they closed down the country. And I asked him how he was doing. And he said, you know, Eddie, it's just a matter of time before all of us say, that's in my world. Let's get going. And I think we reached that, we reached that part, you know. Now yeah. oh, really, yeah. we need to get going because, you know, the economy needs to get going. And, uh, and, and here we are coming out of it. We still have to be uh, cautious. Uh, you mentioned also in the introduction that uh, there's a lot of people out in the streets, right, out there in Texas. Uh, driving here to my lab today, I mean, there's a lot of bars, and I was looking inside the bar, I was like, that's not six feet between number one and number two over there, you know? They're just there. So they have to be, they have to be um, cautious uh, about the whole thing. So, um, you know, another story that, that goes with this, what is happening. Remember 2008 when yeah. the economy went mm -hmm. to the crapper? You know, yeah. that was when Cat Smiles, that's when I founded Cat Smiles. Mm -hmm. And what happened days, you know, I had a bigger lab. Uh, I had about six employees with me and the depression uh, hit. I don't know if you know the difference between depression and uh, recession. Recession is when you don't have money. Depression is when I don't have money. I don't <laughs> even know that. Right. So, 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 you know, I, I started losing my accounts, you know, because I was working with CatCam, you know, and most of my doctors were CatCam owners. So that's when I realized we're not selling smiles anymore because nobody wants to pay for their smiles. And we're going to do our own single unit. So I, I had to close part of my laboratory. And I ran into my savings. And I was I was struggling. I was doing really bad. And a good friend of mine uh, over the phone uh, told me, you know, uh, what you just done is you just, you're just at the bottom of the barrel. And, you know, and imagine you're at the bottom of the barrel. It's empty. There's nothing at the bottom. All you can do now is just look up and climb up. Mm -hmm. And I sure did that. You know, and by just thinking again positive, because I've fallen into that negative part, um, I uh, came across a good friend of mine, Dr. James Mahoudi, and I said, hey, yeah. James, um, what about if we do a, a same-day smiles? There was two things that I was doing here. First, it was survival, because I needed to make money. Mm -hmm. And second, I thought, you know, it would be cool if I can do a smile in a day. We talked with Remo a lot about that. In those days, it was difficult to do. And he said, yeah, let's do it. So I did my first case with uh, Jimmy, I call him, and it was three grand. And I was like, wow, took the money, put it in the bank, you know? And the next week I did another case, another three grand, pop, put it in the bank. And I did about six cases the first year, maybe eight cases the first year. And I was like, man, that was pretty rad. So I started getting more into Facebook and putting them all on Facebook. And then I started doing one a week, you know, and two a week, and then it just began, it just absorbed me. And now it's, it's what I do. So going back so, to that time, you know. So is most of the work you do now, from what I'm hearing, it, it's actually in dental offices? Are, yeah. Are you doing many cases as you would have back in your laboratory and cases are sent to you and you send them back? Until this happened, James, um, I was doing probably 70% uh, cat mouse in office. Okay. Uh, Doing okay. probably 20% in the laboratory and 10% okay. designing and sending back. Okay. Now I'm seeing, and I've, I've been wanting to stop a little bit of the traveling, to tell the truth. That, my kids that, get, that gets a lot. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's pressure, you know, and, and cash uh -huh. is not for everybody. Some cases don't work as well as, you know, others. So sometimes you really have to take your time and like, okay, let's, this, this is not a, a good candidate for same day smiles. So anyhow, now what I'm what I'm shooting for is 50 percent and do maybe 30 percent in the laboratory and 20 percent design. I welcome it all. Um, the good thing with this technology is that we can work from anywhere. You know, I have my laboratory yeah. here yeah. behind yeah. me. Um, I have a laboratory mounted in uh, one of my biggest accounts in Florida with Dr. Terry Alfer. I have a full on lab over there. Okay. So when I go there and work a week, I can work there. Mm -hmm. I have. The, my in-lab software in my laptop so I can travel and send my work either here or that lab on the East Coast. And I also have now, because of what happened, I have a, a setup at my home. I have a nice big computer at home where I get all my cases. I have my printers over there too. 
and I can work. You know, I can do Zoom with my kids, and then just go to the to go to the garage and have my little thing right there, and just work. Then come to the laboratory. So, I, remember, Todd, I sent you a a, a a a song that we couldn't put live because of the rights. I'm sorry, uh, sorry. But everybody, <laughs> everybody that is watching this, uh, some of you uh, probably know this song. It's called Vacation. Uh, and and just listen to that song because really is, I really identify with it. Um, I, I feel like I'm on vacation because I love I love my occupation. Yes. You know, uh, it's just not work. It's just um, there's a hobby that I'm getting paid for. You know, exactly. and it's a great. That's, well, it's that's a great me. I, I think as I've gotten older, you know, Todd and I used to have traveled a lot, and and, and I think what I have found is just have more versatility more angles, particularly within a business model, is, is I've always thought, you know, I, I, you know, I admire you. I do all my own lab work, so that's one of my versatility models. I teach, I teach online, I do dentistry, and, you know, trying to get the best of all worlds. And I know as I've gotten older, my favorite thing, Eddie, is to go to my ceramic sanctuary, where it's <laughs> just me and my ceramics, or where I get into my right brain, and I'm really creative. I gotta and, write that down, uh, I, I, ceramic. Sanctuary. <laughs> Go but ahead. I, I, you keep talking. I like that. There, there's something so unique about <laughs> because it's basically jewelry. It's biological jewelry that we make, and 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 you know that art of ceramics. And I admire so much of what you do, because I know CAD CAM for me has brought me into a full circle of satisfaction within what I do, and I really enjoy it a lot. I, I always tell my wife i said even when i'm older if i can at least have a handpiece and something to grind on yeah. i'll be a happy old man <laughs> well, well you have to have the passion uh, you know working in a laboratory can be very monotonous it's not just yeah. for anybody uh I, and throughout all these years you know i'm, I'm 51 52 pretty soon in a couple of weeks and i started do, i was i became a dental technician at 20 and i hope i started doing cat's mouse uh, probably 12 years ago uh you know, it's you got to have the passion to do this because a lot of people that have seen me succeed throughout all these years with anything I did in dentistry, uh, you know, they think that they can just go to dental school, dental lab school, because I'm making the money. They're going to jump in and make that much money. But it's not like that. You got to be prepared. Like having the commitment that I did not have for soccer because of the failure that I had in my life, I made a promise to myself when I went to that dental school that I will never fail again. And I made this. I don't know why. Maybe I'm good. I've always been good with my, my hands doing art. But it's monotonous. But I hey, fell in love with it. Hey, Eddie. I fell in love with it. To, to be good at soccer, you got to have a good brain, hand, body coordination, right? And yeah. <laughs> plus, you got the art side. So yeah. uh, I, I've always admired what you've done. I follow you on Facebook all the time. Yeah. And, yeah it, and it's, I, it's, it's been great. It, it's been great. And I think that now that we all spend time with our families and we got scared of, you know, not the yeah. end of the world, but we didn't know when this was going to end. Uh, I think uh, I think we we actually are ready as humanity. We are ready to rock and roll again. Everybody's ready to rock yeah. and roll. And I think it united us. I don't know why, if anybody else noticed it, but in this last three months, I haven't heard of any war. You know, all the wars. <laughs> you know? Uh, you know, now now we have issues here at the, at the Wild Animal Park, uh, Safari Park is called, uh, uh -huh. where all the animals are loose now. They had to build walls because the uh, coyotes, there was no humans anymore. So coyotes were trying to get the gazelles in the zoo because there's no humans. <laughs> you know, so sharks are more active, uh, uh, a bear are more active, uh, yeah. you know, nature. I yeah. think really it's a message from planet Earth to say, you know what? You guys, I gave you a lot of, a lot of keys right here to stop your ways. I'm gonna throw something at you, and you're gonna have to stop and realize what's going on. I think Planet Earth, you know. I love it. Us, you know? I love it. Now, That's a great, I, great. Uh, and I, I had to write down another phrase: humanity is ready to rock and roll. I agree. There you go. <laughs> everybody, everybody, yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, I think uh, yeah, great points. Uh, you know, it it made us our entire planet just go on pause for a minute. And whether we did it, do it globally or we do it individually, I, it's it's all healthy. And we all got redirected. We got refocused. Whether it's on God or your family or your business, 
And I, yeah. the thing that, uh, that strikes me, um, close to my heart, Eddie, is your story about being a soccer player and, and knowing yeah. you messed it up. Yeah. I kind of did the same thing because I could have played college basketball coming into coming out of high school. And I chose not to because just to be honest with you, I was going to go chase girls in college and I uh, just did. I didn't want to do that. And so I have and if anybody's watching this, uh, wants to check out my Facebook page, it says underneath my my picture, never have a should have, meaning I should have done this. I should have done that. I And so I try to live my life. Well, if it comes in my head and I think I should do this, I'm going to go try it because what's the worst that's going to happen? I'm, yeah. Who cares if I fail? It, it's OK. But if I don't try, if I don't yeah. do it, I'm going to have the regret in my heart that I should yes. have tried it. And so yeah. you and I are brothers in that regard, for sure. Yeah, for sure. And you learn that with life too, right? I mean, if yeah. I knew uh, if I knew then what I know now, the typical thing, you know, um, I feel the same way as you do. You know, you just, uh, uh, you have to try it. I think that a lot of uh, the younger generation, not everybody, but the younger generation, um, they're not, they're just afraid of failing. So they don't try right. something. And like you said, you need to try it because the worst that can happen is either a no or a failure. Nobody died from a no or a failure. We just go to the next thing. But you yeah. got to try it. If you don't try, then you will never know what have, what could have happened. You know, right. so it's always good to try. Now, it, I am not, not going to try uh, skydiving. Nah. -uh. <laughs> <laughs> you put your love Eddie. <laughs> okay, here, here's the deal. When you turn 60, I'll be turning 70. Okay. We're going skydiving. Okay. I may just say, you know what? Why not? I'm going with James. <laughs> there we go. Let's do it. Hopefully you have done it already, so I'll go strap next to you. So I'll strap next to you. I, I have skydived, but I, I'd be willing to uh, give it a try. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> hey, Eddie, your blessing. Thank you so much Thanks, for Eddie. being on with us. You're, we got to do the shaka sign. Got to, got to do it right. Thanks, brother. Appreciate you. Peace. Peace to everybody. Love. Thanks. Love you, Eddie. Thanks you for guys. coming on, buddy. <laughs> James, I told you, Eddie, he's a rock star, man. He he lectured at our at our place, and he had everybody laughing, motivated, yeah. and uh, it was just what he it was one of our best lectures at Digital and Emil. Just great guy. He, you know, I've heard his story before, and I I love his story. It reminds me a lot of my dad's story. I'm not calling Eddie my dad because he's still listening, <laughs> but my dad. <laughs> had a lot of odds that could have been against him, but he never yeah. saw that as an odd. He saw it as an opportunity to persevere. And and that's, you know, no matter what is thrown your way, how you think about it and where you go, doesn't mean that, you know, some of my greatest blessings, I know when I was going through dental school, you know, I, I was so conservative. I remember there were sometimes all I had was peanut butter and uh, English muffins. Yeah. And and a little applesauce. But I that was never a downer for me because I was so driven to look for the future. And and I, I feel that same way now. I've always had that within me. But I really appreciate what Eddie said there. And I, I think that's a, a great take home for everyone here who is watching yeah. is be strong, persevere. Remember how you think is how you'll feel. I like the fact that Eddie said he wakes up every morning happy and i think that's great i i always have the fay the 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 quote that says if you could as a kid i love cheerio so if i can wake up with a cheerio moment in the morning where you you're, you're looking forward to getting up to eat your cheerios then you'll have a better day because as you start your day so does your day go absolutely yeah wow. it's just a, a new perspective on life and <laughs> anybody out there really struggling just look in your heart and decide you're going to be happy yeah. today and, and you can make it happen yeah. but and you know that doesn't mean we don't struggle you know of we, course we, uh, yeah. and i you know even in my life i can be a little melancholy now and then and whenever i'm melancholy my dad would always say just think of your blessings think of your blessings and yep. th if you think more on your blessings than your heartaches or whatever they may be, eventually your emotions will follow and you'll have a different perspective on life. And that's what Eddie showed us today. <laughs> he sure did. He was awesome. But, you know, yeah. I think maybe that's why his legs look so good. He's He was uh, a soccer player. Yeah.
Yeah. Eddie has the plagues. Eddie has the plagues. Yeah, well, he didn't. Nobody knew he was. <laughs> uh, well, well, we got to bring him back. Hey, Eddie, you gotta, you gotta show us that. You gotta show us your fancy legs. You're back Look, on, Eddie. There, you're back on for some. Ah, there we go. Those are Eddie those are some. Nice legs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to the beach. Thank you. Okay, God. <laughs> All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. We will be back Wednesday night. Thanks for uh, liking us, and uh, make sure you check out uh, or go to our Facebook page and like it. It's very important yes. to James and I, and uh, we do appreciate it. We do know everybody that's the that has been liking show it. Live. Dental Show Live. Dental Show Live. And uh, live. for everybody that has been on the show, uh, we are putting all this on our new YouTube channel as well. So mm -hmm. uh, take a look at those. James Clem. Always good to see you. Uh, have a great rest of the weekend, my friend. You too. Be safe, my friend. <laughs>